Sometimes we need to become the thing we fear to prevent something worse. Is Metro Awakening worth it on the Quest 3? Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and today we'll be discussing if Metro Awakening is worth it on the Quest 3. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! <laughs> Metro Awakening is developed by Vertigo Games, a highly acclaimed studio entrusted with this iconic IP by Deep Silver, the publisher of Dead Island 2. From the looks of it, they might have crafted one of the finest VR experiences yet, a blend of post-apocalyptic horror and intense first-person shooter action. And that's saying something coming from someone who's played Metro Exodus and Metro 2033 years ago. This new installment delivers a 10 plus hour thrill ride, starting strong and never letting up. Set in the year 2028, the game unfolds in Moscow subways based on Dmitry Glukovsky's universe, predating the events of Metro 2033. So what's the story? You play as Sedar, a doctor stationed at Akademicheskaya who is still grappling with the grief he shares with his wife Yana over their son's death. When Yana goes missing, Sedar descends into the tunnels to find her. Vertigo describes the story as an origin tale for Khan, a mysterious figure in Metro lore. The game balances its fast pace with slower, character-driven moments, delivering the emotional depth Metro fans have come to love. This unforgettable VR experience is packed with immersive controls, smooth gunplay, a smart inventory system, gorgeous graphics, and all the detailed touches that reveal the developer's deep passion for the Metro series. Even on the Quest 3, where the visuals are slightly toned down compared to other platforms, the game's graphics blew me away, especially given how well optimized it is for VR. It even performs impressively on the Quest 2. The inventory system is a standout. Your backpack filled with essentials like your mask, grenades, weapons, and lighter can be pulled from your left shoulder, a nod to the Walking Dead Saint and Sinners. The world is filled with incredible details that make it feel alive, from wiping condensation off your gas mask to catching water droplets from pipes. Spiders crawl on your face when you burn through webs, just as they used to in the Metro games. And yes, you can accidentally set your hands on fire if you reach too close to a barrel. Hot, hot, hot. In the pitch black tunnels, you rely on a rechargeable flashlight that flickers and barely pierces the darkness, requiring you to charge it periodically as you explore beautifully voiced NPC conversations fill the air. And the voice acting and sound design really pull you into the story, with the friend's voice guiding you through most of the campaign from the safety of the station. Your home Omi has got your back, and the story is very well set up with characters you're introduced with, especially these characters. To living, to life. You have a Heineken with them just before they die. Ah! Oh! Though some critics have called it a walking simulator, Metro Awakening is a true Metro game at heart. Playing it brought a wave of nostalgia over me, taking me back to my high school days when I first played through the series. It even rekindled my arachnophobia. As someone who hates spiders with a passion, I actually closed my eyes while navigating the spider-infested labyrinth. Sure, you can squish those eight-legged spawns of hell if they crawl on you, but I'd rather get out of there as fast as possible. The tightly focused linear design makes Metro Awakening feel like a true sequel in the series. Like previous Metro games, it encourages players to scavenge every corner for essentials like health vials with limited visibility, conserving ammo, grenades, and gas mask filters is crucial, especially when venturing into radiation zones. If you don't keep up with supplies, you'll end up like me, sprinting to escape while rats nip at my toes. My Ten little piggies. Managing resources adds a layer of strategy. I found myself often emptying the clips from enemies' guns or temporarily grabbing one to fight back when cornered. The game doesn't directly tell you to do these things, you just pick them up on your own. After all, in a radioactive wasteland, there's no manual for survival, right? Alarm! We are under attack! Keep up behind the beach! 
back! What was that? Huh. Stay alert! I will find the piece of shit! Some players may even skip the ammo altogether, opting for a stealthy approach. It's actually possible to complete the game without shedding blood, although that's too disciplined for me. The moment I pick up a gun, I am ready to pew pew. Combat and stealth encounters are incredibly cinematic and realistic, with options to knock enemies out or take them by surprise. Some will even react as they sense danger or scream when shot in the limbs, and when enemies wear a helmet, you can't knock them down. What the fuck was that noise? Metro Awakening delivers the intense gunplay and adrenaline-pumping moments you'd expect from Vertigo games. The handling and reloading animations are incredibly slick and realistic, with weapons like the AK, pistol, crossbow, and poison dart gun, one I'm still trying to hunt down. Metro Awakening is also a true Metro game in its horror roots. From start to finish, it maintains that haunting, unsettling atmosphere fans love, grounding every encounter in a chilling immersive experience. While Metro Awakening is packed with action and intense combat, it's also a terrifying, pulse-pounding VR horror experience, even scarier than Resident Evil 4. The horror elements bleed into every aspect of the game, from nerve-wracking confrontations with lurkers that make you forget to run, to mutant creatures jumping out just when you think you're prepared. They constantly change positions, hunting you down like the Jurassic Park dinosaurs, keeping you on edge for what feels like an eternity. This makes you feel unease for 15 minutes, trying not to cry like a baby. I'm not scared. I'm not scared, I tell myself, while trying not to lose it. The game also throws in unexpected scares like creepy residents wielding blow darts and eerie ghostly apparitions, all building constant tension that isolates you and forces you into nerve-wracking combat. You'll stumble into rooms filled with ravaged corpses, shadows lurking just out of sight, and lurkers and nozalis that snap you like a Snickers bar. Hence music warns you when they're near, while best class lighting heightens the atmosphere, triggering your fight or flight instinct. As for gripes, Metro Awakening held my attention throughout my playtime, and I genuinely got lost in its world. The visuals are top-notch, and the VR gameplay feels incredibly satisfying. Although I did encounter a couple of minor glitches, once I couldn't climb a ladder, why do you fail me? And another time, the wires disappeared from my rechargeable flashlight, but both were fixed by restarting the game. I've also heard some players comment on reused locations and lack of full body representation, just floating hands. While I would have loved to see my weapons holstered on my hip, the floating hands didn't detract from my experience. However, overall, Metro Awakening pulled me back into that beloved haunting world, delivering the immersive story and chilling universe that fans of the Metro series cherish. So what are your thoughts on Metro Awakening? I hope this game catches a lot of eyes in the VR game industry. I believe this was Metro's first array into VR, and as someone who loved the IP, I found this to be one of my favorite VR games on the Quest 3, possibly the best this year. Behemoth might change my mind since it's coming in a few days, but we'll see. However, I'm encouraged to follow through to this to the very end of this game, and perhaps revisit other games in the series. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, especially if you love the Metro games, and comment your thoughts on the game below, and what your favorite Metro game is and why. I'm always interested in learning about your thoughts. Thank you for watching, and that's all.